We need to approve the minutes uh, from the library. The library meeting? Yeah, but I don't know if I we got enough. Can. I don't think we got enough here I mean, to do that's that. because right, Tom wasn't. Okay, we'll table them again. So we're on there. Keep, them, keep that in mind. We well, wait a minute, Janet. It was you. And but it was four of us, but this is, what's, what would be a quorum for four to approve? Two? So it's just he and I were the only ones that were there that are present today. Mm -hmm. okay. John's not here and Tom's gone, so mm -hmm. we'll I'll do that I'll next. Move it to March. We need to uh, appoint somebody to sit on the alcohol beverage board, and I take it Ted Lynn uh, is asking to do so. He's been on it, hasn't he? Yes. yes. So we need a, a motion to approve, or if you have somebody else? I said when we approve Deadline. I said Okay, we okay. approve the second. Further discussion? If none, all in favor, raise your right hand. All them opposed to say. There's four spots to sign, so if you want to squeeze all five of you in there, we can. On the highway, I have a quick question. Where do you want um, Karen to take that money out? Building, we, I think he was going to choose. He was going to choose. And okay. come back to us with it, paperwork. Okay. I was just thinking building maintenance or something and then see at the end of the year. Yeah, just let them bring it to you. Pick. Pick. Yeah, you know, about cover copies being more expensive. Yeah, we were looking at this. It's kind of expensive. Well, for, that's for a place that's sure on money, they have ten sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Brandon, are you here for the cum cap? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Sorry. Okay. Well, I guess we'll. Jenny, you got something on that? You made up some figures here. Or? I did. I was going to let Brandon go first. Okay, I'll that's fine. Help him, and we'll talk together on the max levy and what's going on. Bring some numbers. I don't worry about it. Been working on this. Uh, the, the, the front sheet is something similar to what Jennifer prepared for QCAP, and that's to look at the rates and how much revenue that would generate. QCAP. Um, QBridge. This is for QBridge, yeah. but it's the front sheet is similar to what, what she did for QCAP in that if you look at the different rates, what, what the revenue would be. So. Um, so we can look at, you know, currently the cube bridge rate is 3.33 cents per hundred dollars. But um, I'll get to that. I'd really kind of like to start at actually on the back sheet, which is one that you've already seen, which shows <coughs> revenue and expense since 2000. And, you know, I. I just want you to understand what I've gone through and how I've gotten to the information that's on the front page. Um, that, that sheet that shows budget revenue expense and balance is a very broad overview. 
it includes all revenues and all expenses. Um, for instance, if you look at 2000, 2001, it looks like there's over a million dollars in revenue. But the second sheet from the back shows, I, I went in and further broke that down, the, the, the revenue from different revenue sources. And uh, just under bridge in Cumbridge at the top is a principal. See, back in 2000, 2001, 2002, the treasurer invested Cumbridge Bridge monies separate from the rest of whatever, county general or whatever. So that number isn't really accurate, that million dollars, because that was you know, $650,000, $700,000 that was just basically transferred to, you know, a CD or whatever and, and back. Um, what I also learned in looking at the breakdown, um, and you can see um, for the different, those are all the funds that contribute to Cumbridge revenue. What are those funds? Where do you get money besides from the tax rate? Um, property tax, vehicle excise tax, financial institution tax, commercial vehicle excise tax. We get 80% reimbursement for bridge inspection from the feds. Um, we get interest. Uh, there was, again, back in early 2000s, the principal, and then there's a miscellaneous, and one year there was a property damage. Um, what I was seeing is, you know, like, we do sometimes get reimbursed for property damage. If there's an accident, somebody runs into guardrail or damages a bridge, if, if there's charges, then we can get reimbursed through the prosecutor's office. Um, a lot of those are in that miscellaneous. You know, that's really kind of a wash because we still have to spend the money to do the repairs. We just get reimbursed yeah. for it. Um, so there, there are several different sources, but if you look at the actual funds, it, it's a small percentage. Um, and in some of those <coughs> particular funds, it's a lot smaller. It's decreasing. Um, one that concerns me is the vehicle excise tax. In 2005, we received $79,000 from vehicle excise tax. In 2012, we received $19,000. So I don't know if you ever heard back from that state guy on yeah. that. See, that's something that, that's money that's collected at the license branch and then distributed to the counties by the state. So the state spend that for somewhere else and not send it to the I county? Know, I, I, you might think that. I can't say that or for something's sure. something's changed. I don't well, know. and the issue I had two years ago, we did away with the 101s and they went back to, which is the personal property returns, and it went back to the BMV. So I would have thought at that time we should have seen an increase anything excise wise coming back to the county since they took it away from us on personal property tax but as you can tell by these reports it didn't I mean it didn't increase anything coming into excise in when they took away the 101s that's why the state government uh, makes the boast of how fiscally uh, uh, responsible they are, they are and how good how good a shape the they're going to send money back to the tax <laughs> they so take away from the county and seen a bolster their own decline in excise even though we gave up our personal property to the state by them eliminating the 101 pilots. The interest is really down too significantly. Yeah. Yeah. I know that are, is that um, how we're choosing to invest? Are we? Are I, I, I didn't is that a question that. for the treasurer? I'm guessing it's just that it's zero she interest. She came to us. Great, you know. I mean if you can earn a percent on something you're doing good these Oral days. came to the commissioners um, the first meeting um, and did her finance report and there's little or nothing investment wise even in the I forget the name of the investment group Indiana she named the three places she had investments at in local or even statewide when they can mingle their funds with other counties it still wasn't earning any type of interest to speak bonds yeah 43 percent <laughs> Yeah, it was like nothing. So, 
that's part of what I've been doing, trying to understand, you know, where we were, where we are, where you know, where we want to go. The next sheet is um, per Kim's request, I believe, uh, of looking at a 10-year bridge replacement plan. Um, I, I think I had mentioned that, you know, USI, who is currently our bridge inspection consultant, they do about a seven-year replacement plan because they reinspect every two years. Um, you know, if I go by their plan, because they also give us a cost estimate, if I would apply those numbers to, to my proposal, you know, I, I, could, I could make it look like we need a million dollars. I mean, not, not me. But I could be presenting that based on this information, we need a million dollars a year. You know, I don't think that's reasonable. And so what I did is based on a lot of different factors, okay, in this, uh, the tenure bridge plan, there's a deficient obsolete column. You know, based on certain criteria, a bridge can be considered structurally deficient. That doesn't mean it's going to collapse. It's not imminent danger. Um, went to bridge conference last week and NDOT has a about a 10% structurally deficient ratio. So 10% of all their bridges are rated structurally deficient. Um, currently we've got 6 out of 89 which is significantly lower than that. Um, so that's one criteria. The sufficiency rating column right next to it that is a number that is pulls in a bunch of different factors from all the different things that they look at for bridge inspection and you know puts a number to it. Um, that is something that we definitely look at. Another thing that's not on there is um, a load rating. Now we've, we've gotten to the point where we've got one bridge in Larwell that's presumably only local traffic over the railroad that's posted at 15 ton. Um, as long as a bridge is in either the anal structural analysis or professional opinion of the in uh, inspecting engineer, as long as it's 16 ton or greater, it doesn't have to be posted. So it's, it's on the border there. But um, most of these bridges in this plan are at that um, less than 20 ton, 16 to 18 ton rating and so combination of those factors is how I come up with that. I took those these bridges and went and met with Mark McCoy whose lifetime of experience building bridges does our bridges and I said you know let's let's put something a little more realistic as far as numbers to these bridges for replacement. So we look at overall length and and you know different factors that we information we get from the inspection report put some more realistic numbers which I believe in every case is less than what USI had for their estimate they tend to be conservative on those kind of things and I went down through and and you know every two you know look at doing two bridges every year which is what we've been doing since 1997 um, and you know the bottom line is and I did apply 2% inflation after 2013. So, you know, the... I think it's enough, Brandon. Well, <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if I, when I first did it, I did 3%, and it was about 300,000 total difference. Okay, so it was 7.58 million instead of 7.28 million. Um, I don't think that's going to, over 10 years, going to one way or the other. Um, historically, McCoy's prices on a per square foot basis have gone up about 2% a year. Um, again, I'm trying to be realistic um, and trying to keep with the plan that we've been working on. Um, you know, we went from 18 bridges posted for weight limit to one. We've replaced um, you know, 25 bridges and you know, 12 years, 28 bridges and 13 years, something like that. Um, there are uh, 
I looked at a, the age of our bridges. We've got 17 bridges out of 89 that were construct, originally constructed in the 50s or earlier. Okay, now some of those have been rehabilitated. Maybe the only thing that's left is the, the abutments, you know, new, new deck and, and beams and things. But the way they look at it in the inspection report is the year it was originally constructed and then if there was rehabilitation done on it. Um, again, most of those bridges are on that 10 year plan. And you start talking about bridges, you know, by the time you get through this plan, in 10 years, and then now we're looking at, you know, in the 60s, there was another nine bridges built, 70s, another 10 bridges built, and so I guess at two bridges a year, we're, 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 we're making some ground from where we were, and, you know, in the, in the 80s, they rebuilt eight bridges, but in the 90s, 20 bridges were rebuilt, and in the 2000s, 18 bridges replaced, and since 2010 we've done seven. So the trend since the 90s has gotten us to where we are. Um, I mentioned in in the email that I sent to you that you know we had some structures fail um, back in the early 2000s, and we certainly don't want to be in, in that position again. And I truly believe that we're we're past that, but we still have some culverts that um, have some issue. So, to the front page, um, I on the right, I, I started with that 607,000, which is an average cost to replace two bridges per year. Um, I went back uh, from 2000 to 2012 and looked at the average amount that we spend on bridge repairs. Um, you know, that could be anything from guardrail damage to uh, uh, putting some additional riprap for erosion control or, or driving some sheeting to protect the footing. Um, I looked at replace, for the next one, replace 10 culverts per year. That is based on a number that our legislators had requested what is the cost of replacing culverts and doing road repairs in 2012 numbers. So I went back to 85 to all the culverts that I have in my inventory and adjusted those for uh, consumer price index uh, to 2012 dollars and it was uh, $12,670 per structure average. So um, that's where that comes from. The 5500 is our share of bridge inspection and so the sum of that is 790 if you take the 2012 revenue from other sources uh, 65,000 and that's something that is a definitely an unknown um, we don't know what what's going to happen there if interest rates go up and excise tax goes up tax goes up then you know that would be great but that's where it was in 2012 so you take that from the 790, you're showing a need of 724, which based on the chart to the left puts you at, at about a two cent increase. Um, one cent that uh, on the very left column of that chart is what well, you know 1.336 billion net assessed value. You take one cent for hundred dollars. You're just moving the decimal place over. So one cent increase to any fund that comes from that would be one hundred thirty-three thousand six hundred five dollars. No, Brandon, a question. Yeah. When was the last set? Did somebody say twenty-four years ago? The last oh, time we. Set? Yeah, it was something like that. Um, I. You have not changed it for twenty. Bridge was twenty-eight and key cap, or vice versa. Almost 28 and almost 24 years. Years since you've done anything. Since and I you established it. 19, yeah, I can't remember the date. Well, I guess 